Humans have always craved to know more about their history, but not everyone knows that the Book of Enoch, which is banned from the Bible, reveals shocking secrets about our history. What is the Book of Enoch? Why did they ban it from the Bible? And what does it reveal about our past? In this video, we'll dive into the secrets of this book and try to find answers to all of these questions. First of all, let's see who Enoch is. Did you know that there are two individuals named Enoch in the Bible? The first Enoch is mentioned in Genesis chapter 4 and is the son of Cain. Cain is the son of Adam and Eve and the brother of Abel. It's written in the verse 17, Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. We read about a second Enoch in Genesis chapter 5 before the great flood. Enoch is the son of Jared who is the son of Mahalalil. Enoch was Adam's great 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 grandson thus making him the seventh from Adam. Enoch became father to Methuselah when he was 65 years old. Enoch continued to walk with God for another 300 years and had more children. However, instead of experiencing death, Enoch's fate was unique. God took him to heaven and he was not subject to a regular death. The text reads in verses 21 through 24 that Enoch walked with God and he was no more for God took him. Enoch was raptured, meaning he was lifted or taken up to heaven. The book of Enoch is said to have been written by this second Enoch. The book of Enoch consists of multiple sections and while the most well known is First Enoch, there are also two other distinct books traditionally attributed to Enoch. Second Enoch, known as the Book of Secrets of Enoch, or Salvonic Enoch, and Third Enoch, also known as the Book of the Palaces or Hebrew Enoch. These books contain additional teachings, visions and revelations ascribed to Enoch, but they are not widely recognized or studied as First Enoch. The Book of Enoch, specifically the older sections such as the Book of the Watchers, is estimated to have been written between 300 and 200 BC. The latest part, the Book of the Parables, is believed to have been composed around 100 BC. The Book of Enoch contains unique material that expands upon various topics such as the origins of demons and Nephilim, the reasons behind the fall of certain angels, an explanation of the moral necessity of the Genesis Flood, and the prophetic descriptions of the reign of the Messiah. The book presents a narrative consistent with the references in Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 to 2 where the sons of God take human wives. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair and took them as wives. This resulted in the birth of hybrid beings called Nephilim. The presence of these giants and their wickedness is further elaborated upon in the book. Enoch 1 also includes dialogues between God and various angels, including well-known figures like Raphael and Gabriel. These dialogues provide additional insights into the celestial realm and the divine plan for judgment and justice. The book provides an explanation for the fall of certain angels from heaven, the reason behind their rebellion and the consequences they face. It describes the disobedience and transgressions of these angels, leading to their expulsion from heaven. The book lists numerous fallen angels, numbering around 200, who are believed to have been involved in the rebellion against God and the corrupting influence on humanity. The names of these fallen angels are presented in the book, along with their respective roles and activities. The Book of Enoch portrays Enoch as a messenger or intermediary between God and the fallen angels. Enoch is depicted as delivering godly messages of judgment and condemnation to the fallen angels, informing them that they will have no peace or mercy due to their actions. In addition to the fallen angels, the Book of Enoch also describes the roles and activities of good angels, including prominent archangels such as Michael, Gabriel and Uriel. These archangels are depicted as faithful servants of God who carry out various tasks and responsibilities, including keeping watch over humanity. In relation to the Genesis Flood, the Book of Enoch offers a moral explanation for its necessity. It presents the corrupting influence of fallen angels and the resulting wickedness of humanity as reasons for God's decision to bring about the Flood as a means of divine judgment and purification. Furthermore, the Book of Enoch contains prophetic passages that provide an exposition of the thousand-year reign of the Messiah, also known as the Messianic Age of the Kingdom of God. It describes a future time of peace, righteousness and justice upon the leadership of the Messiah, the Son of Man. The Book of Enoch includes some strange references to Noah and provides some unique details about his birth and significance found nowhere. According to the book, Noah is born with white hair, which initially causes uncertainty for his father Lamech. However, Noah's right disposition and his ability to bless the Lord upon his birth reassured Lamech about his paternity. 
The book also depicts Methuselah, Noah's grandfather, seeking advice from Enoch, who reveals that Noah is indeed Lamech's son. Enoch further reveals that Noah and his three sons will be spared when the earth is destroyed, negating their role in the preservation of humanity. These details contribute to the overall richness and diversity of traditions and perspectives surrounding Noah and the Great Flood. So why is the Book of Enoch not found in the Bible? The main reason being, the scholars have raised concerns about the authenticity of the Book of Enoch due to several factors, including the different time frames attributed to Enoch's authorship in the various sections of the book. The discrepancy suggests that multiple authors or redactors likely contributed to the composition of the text over an extended period. Furthermore, the distinctive religious trends, concepts and language found in different chapters of the book align with the religious and cultural contexts of their respective time periods. This observation supports the theory that the Book of Enoch is a compilation of writings from various authors who attributed their work to Enoch to lend it authority and authenticity. While the Book of Enoch was initially accepted and held in high regard by certain Jewish and Christian communities, it is presently considered pseudepigraphical, which means it's ascribed to a figure that's Enoch who likely did not author it. The classification of the Book of Enoch is pseudepigraphical, based on factors such as its late composition, the presence of anachronistic elements, and its departure from established religious teachings and norms. These factors contribute to its separation from the canonical scriptures of Judaism and mainstream Christianity. Scholars generally agree that the Book of Enoch was composed during the Hellenistic period of Judaism, spanning from the 3rd century BC to the 1st century AD. It reflects influences from Hellenistic Jewish thought and incorporates apocalyptic themes and imagery. But do these claims make the book unworthy to be in the Bible? While the Book of Enoch is not considered authentic scripture by most religious traditions, it remains a valuable source for understanding Jewish and early Christian thought, as well as the development of apocalyptic literature during the Hellenistic period. The book had significance during the Second Temple period as well. The fragments of the Book of Enoch in Aramaic, as well as Greek and Latin translations, have been found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. This discovery indicates that the book was known and circulated among Jews and early Near Eastern Christians during the time. Additionally, the Book of Enoch is referenced or quoted by several authors from the 1st and 2nd centuries. It's mentioned in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, and a short section from 1st Enoch is even cited in the New Testament. Jude, the brother of James, mentions the book of Enoch in his letter in the New Testament. Jude chapter 14 to 15 reads, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and all of the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. It can be compared and found the same as Enoch chapter 1 verse 9. It reads, And behold, he cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness which they have ungodly committed, and of all the hard things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now it's your turn. Do you think these arguments are credible? Should this book be included in the Bible? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys soon.